Hey everyone, how are you doing? Um, so, just some things that I'd like to share with everybody that I think will be quite useful. Um, I'm going to go into a share screen if I go. And I can show you what's what. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about uh, today was managing your business and budgeting. Um, some of us have been in PQ1 for a little while now. Um, some of us are fairly new. Um, so some of this information will definitely benefit you going forward. Uh, so we'll just jump right in. Um, so like I said, managing a business isn't easy. Um, and especially if you've never had any experience whatsoever, it can be like, whoa. Um, but I always say, and I always tell us as nurses, your skills are transferable. So even if you worked in an office in a cubicle, you were managing your phone, you were managing emails, you have some experience of management. So just transfer those skills over with PQ1 and build on that. Um, and like I said, before you know, we're a massive team and you need to be organised. So it's best to start now. Uh, so if you're new, it's best to start being with PQ1 for a while. It's something that you should start doing. Um, before it gets way too big and you know you're unorganized and can't manage very well uh, so what I do I have four little books and the books that I use I'm sure I showed Camila um, some of my books um, and I found that this is the best way for me to organize and manage my business Book. My advert book is literally just ads, anything to do with ads. If I have an idea that pops into my head, I'll pop it in the book. If I'm watching a mastermind and I'm taking notes, it'll go in that book. So anything ad related, split testing, all that goes into my advert book. And it's easy because if I want anything, any information ad related, I know exactly where it is and I can just flip to it quickly. Um, next book I use is a diary and it literally is just an A4 diary um, of the year. And that helps me to keep organized and keep on top of my daily tasks. Um, the other book I have is a business book. Um, and this book just covers my expenses, commissions, income, all of that. We'll go over that in a bit more detail. Um, and a personal development book, which I think everybody should have at this stage um, if you've been in PQ1 for a while. Um, your personal development book is personal to you. So what I put in mind is going to differ from yours, but basically your personal development book should be about your goals, your dreams and what you want to achieve. So your vision boards, um, ideas you want to do, maybe it's a new language you want to learn, pop it down in your development, your personal development book. And again, this development book doesn't have to solely be based around the business and the magic. It could be something personal. It could be, you know, your, your future wedding plans or, you know, what you want to do in with your other half or your friends. It can be something completely separate from the business as well, but it's personal to you. So I won't be covering that um, during this presentation because, again, it's personal to you. You need to decide what goes into your personal development book. Um, for me, for example, what I do is I started my book with asking myself a set of questions. Um, similar to what we did when we started with PQ1, where do you want to be, uh, et cetera, what do you want to do, you know, where do you see yourself in life? And what I did is I answered them and then three months down the line, I looked at those answers and sort of looked back and see what I would had been able to achieve from what I haven't been able to achieve. And it was really quite positive for me as well, because I was actually able to achieve quite a lot of things that I said I wanted to do. So, like I said, it's up to you how you want to put your personal development. But again, it's something that you should have. Um, so my daily diary, I have my daily tasks. So like I said, it's just a simple uh, diary you can get from the pound shop, whatever. Um, and what you want to do is insert your daily tasks. Try to have a minimum of five things to do and try to fill it out a week ahead. So I, for example, if you went out tomorrow and got a diary, fill it out Thursday till next week, Thursday. And then again on that Thursday, you'd fill it out again. And this is to ensure your time online is productive and you're not just sitting down watching cat videos. So, I mean, <laughs> we're all guilty of it. I do it as well. You say to yourself, okay, I'm going to go online. I just need to update my page or post some content. You do it and then you find yourself, oh, someone's put a post and you start scrolling. Like, oh, that's funny. And then you start scrolling and you start scrolling. And before you know it, you've actually sat there for about five minutes. So and that five minutes might just seem like five minutes, but it's not a productive five minutes of your day. 
Um, so having a diary ensures that you literally come to your, your laptop, open up your diary and you've got your things to do and you're following that and you're not sort of getting lost on Facebook or getting drawn into something else or this and that that's going on. You're focused on what you've got set for the day. Um, Sorry to interrupt you, Sharice. Can yeah. everyone who's not talking please mute themselves? You're getting some interference. Cheers. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Rich. Um, stick to what's written in your diary. Don't try and do something a few days ahead because you might have finished your task for that day. And it's not an easy thing to do. Um, it sounds pretty simple, but it's actually quite difficult to do. If you set yourself um, a week's worth of stuff to do, what you don't want is to do two days worth of stuff in one day because actually you'll find you've got a day in the week where you've not planned anything, you've not got anything set up and you're gonna probably waste time just being on, online doing things that aren't that productive. So stick to what's written in the diary. And again, check that you're including personal stuff into your weekly or daily diaries. So if you're a person that wakes up in the morning and you meditate, put meditation on your list. You know, if you go to the gym, put it down, yoga, whatever it is you do personally that may be separate from the business, add that to your, your diary. So I'll show you an example of a daily diary. Um, I won't go through it. I'll just leave that for you to have a look. And like I said, you do get the satisfaction from putting it in your diary and being able to sort of tick it off. Yes, I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. Once you've done that, go ahead, watch all the cat videos you want. You know, you can pretty much do what you want because you've stuck to your tasks and you can then reward yourself with something as well. So it's another way of keeping yourself motivated as well, especially if you're having a bad day. You look in your diary, get your stuff done. You can reward yourself with something. It may be going out for a meal it may be just relaxing and watching tv but it's your reward for doing the things that you needed to do for that day and it's helpful especially on the days where you're having a bad day and you really don't feel like doing anything because you open a diary and you're like oh i haven't done anything i need to i need to at least get this finished today so that's sort of an example obviously i don't do all of this stuff every day but it's just a mix of things that you can put down in your diary So business book, uh, like I said, get a separate book for your business. You need to be ensuring that you're writing a monthly record for your income and your outcome of expenses. So whether you're, you've bought camera equipment for your, to make ads or videos, whatever it is, you wanna keep a record of that. Keep all your receipts. This includes any receipts you, anything to do with the business so if you buy a bottle from a magic for your water keep the receipt if you've gone to the pq1 meetup and you bought a train ticket make sure you have that receipt these will be needed for tax purposes and i'm pretty sure rich you can agree with that as being self-employed as an electrician you need to keep these things for tax purposes um yeah um, keep, keep every, yes. receipt, every receipt yeah like even when you get like higher up you you go abroad keep your flight tickets, literally everything, you can claim everything back, so everyone you can keep. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so keep all those things. And again, if, you, if you're brand new, then that's even better because you're jumping ahead. If you're not, look back and see where those things are. Just get them in order. You might not necessarily need them now, but you will in the future. Um, so keep hold of them. Um, what I like to do is re review every six months. Um, in my business book so my six month review was actually in December I technically shouldn't have had a six month review then because I hadn't been in PQ1 six months but I was looking at the time I literally signed up and I took it from there but what I was able to do is look back and physically look at what I was spending in going incoming outgoing where I was maybe breaking even where I'd lost that month and what I was able to do is actually see that me personally, I wasn't putting enough finance into my business as much as I should. And I wouldn't have been able to know that if I didn't have this, this book and keeping track of the incoming and outgoing. So I was able to reflect and say, okay, I can afford to put this much more money in. So do have a review. You can have it six monthly, uh, you can have it three monthly, it's up to you, but do review um, the status of your business. Uh, keep all your credit notes for Magic. For those of you who don't know what a credit note is, don't worry, you will. Um, but for those of you who do, it's obviously just the receipt from Magic, basically stating your commission, uh, what the product was that was bought, 
um, and that's all it is really but do keep hold of that you will need that uh, for future tax purposes and again I know I keep banging on about expenses but do rich is white keep everything even if you go to the shop and you buy tipex to edit a document it's for your business so you need the receipt if you've bought a whiteboard if you've bought pens books vision board anything to do with your business keep the receipt This is an example of a business, my business book. This isn't exactly my business book. I've obviously changed the figures and things, but it's just so you can get an idea of what it looks like month to month. And as you can see in January, uh, what I tend to do is I actually set myself a advertising um, budget. So my maximum that I can absolutely spend on ads this month. And then I will look at the end of the month and I will look back to see how much I actually spent because it's easy to say in your head, okay, I can afford to spend £250 on ads this month, but maybe the ads didn't do well, or this happened, or something happened, and by the end of the month, you may not have actually spent 250 So that's why I've got um, uh, below that an actual spend, of, so I can keep down to the penny track of what I've actually spent that month on ads. Um, and again, because of how Facebook works as well, with the billing coming out at a certain date as well, so you want to keep track of that. Um, also, like I said, any Enagic products that you buy, uh, books to do with learning about your business, growing yourself as an individual, even if they're like um, self-help, more personal grow books, it's still to do with your business. OK. And then obviously you can see the commissions um, at the bottom where it says total outgoings. I've literally just deducted your income and the outgoing. So, for example, if you spent three hundred and seventy seven pounds on your own, of your own money, on your business and then you've got a sign up you've got some commission money coming through even if you want to take your 300 pounds back you still have 700 and odd pound to put back into your business and again i wanted to show this because not every month is the same you will have months where it may not be great you might not get a sign up so you just need to manage your um, expenses accordingly and again even with your outgoings and your income you still got 80 pounds put back into your business if you want to do that. I know some people put 100% of the commission back into their business, but again, it really depends on where you are. Not everybody can afford to do that, but it depends where you are. But again, if you're doing it this way, you can still put something back into your business to run for adverts. Okay. Uh, budgeting. So um, there was a bit of talk um, about you know not being able to run as consistently um and there's things that you can do to to change that or to curb that a little bit so one is to put the commission back into your business no matter how little it is put it back in put that back into your ad budget start your ads at five pound if you're not already and then just scale them when they're performing well pack a lunch for work you do not need to go to costas you do not need that panini from starbucks want it there's a difference you know cut off netflix there's a show box there's an app called showbox if you don't know about it it's completely free and um you can have it as an app on your phone you get the latest tv shows latest movies i know you guys i was talking about i love my shows it's on showbox it's free um unfortunately it only works on android phones so if you've got an iphone tough luck uh, but it's another alternative stop buying that latte on the way to work you really don't need it. Do you know it costs two pounds to get a, a Costa coffee cup that keeps your coffee warm from the local supermarket? Put your coffee in that, take it to work. Cut out the takeaway on the weekends. I can actually testify to this because I did this for about a month. Um, in my household, Fridays are normally, nobody's cooking on Friday, it's takeaway. Either pizza or chips from the oven or someone's getting a Chinese or curry, whatever. Um, and to save money, um, I decided to cut that out. I said to myself, I wasn't going to do the takeaways. I was actually going to go to Tesco and get the ingredients and cook it from scratch. And I know that seems a bit more time consuming, but actually I worked out that I was spending probably about 25 quid on Chinese, not just for me, for the you know, group of us. And that was on a Friday. And when I actually turned to cooking it myself, I was looking at an overhead of £6.63 for the same Chinese food meal that I was eating and paying 25 quid for. So you can make it work. It just depends on how determined you are to make your business successful. 
have a garage or car boot sale my motto is if you haven't used it in over a year you're probably not going to use it so throw it away or sell it it's collecting dust and you're not using it you can get some money and that money can go right back into your business uh, run ads on particular days i mean i know some people in the group have mentioned that fridays are not great days people tend to be out maybe not willing to watch a mastermind for two hours so pick the days that you know you might get more of interaction from if you're really working with a difficult budget and again keep track of your spend uh, your weekly spending this isn't your monthly budgeting book this is you cutting down on the lattes the meal deals at tesco's the sandwiches you know in the cafe across the road cut that out and see how much you actually spent that week and I'm pretty sure you'd have saved money. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not going to be life changing money. But that eight quid that you saved that week could go back into your business. That's two days worth of ad running. And that two days worth of ad running, you could get your next few sign ups in those two days. So you need to really look at the bigger picture. And even though you might think, oh, it's only a fiver, that fiver is one more day of running ads. That fiver could be your sign up. Um, so that's basically what I wanted to cover and just talk about and just ensure that everybody is actually mindful of these things that we should be doing as running a business. I mean, because if you're not and you're just running ads and you're just throwing money out the window because you have no idea of your income, your outgoings, where you're breaking even, your net worth, you've got no idea of it because you're not keeping track on your spending. So I just wanted to cover this all. For those of you who may be brand new, please don't panic and worry too much about knowing all of this. Uh, it's just good practice for you to get into from now. And for those of you who, knew, who are very new, what you can do from now, just something small, just keep your receipts, you know, until you start to build up and understand how, how this all works. And for those of you who've been in PQ1 for a while, you guys need to get on this and get yourself in order. Even if you, you don't have to have four books like I do, but even I think the most important of those books is the business book. You should know how much you've made this month, what's incoming, what's outgoing, how much you spent. Now I know Facebook has the ads and you can see all your budgets, your, your, you know, your performance and everything there but you've got nothing to document for the month. And it's quite hard to keep track of that over a month on Facebook if you're running like 10, 15 ads. Um, which one did, you know, how much you spent, you turn that off. If you've got it all in your book, you can just keep it simple. How much I spent this month, what I actually ran on ads, how much I made, how much signups I got, commission, exactly, for example, and just work out from there what it is you're, you're spending and what you're not spending. Um, and I think if you don't take away anything, take that away today. The business book, do get one. Like I said, my business book isn't anything fancy. It's literally just an A5 book that's blank. It hasn't even got lines in it. And I just jot down all my bits and bobs in there. Um, so I did have one more thing. I didn't run this by Lily or Richard or Adam. So I'm really sorry. I hope this, this is okay. Um, but I wanted to say a budget challenge. Um, I think that for the next three weeks, um, people should cut out as much spending as they can. Like I mentioned with the lattes and the meal deals, cut it out. And whoever saves the most money that week wins the prize. Um, that's one of the things that I'd like to get us to do. Um, and especially if you are, I mean, I'm not pointing anybody out. You don't have to name and shame. But if you're one of those people that have had inconsistent ads running, then this might be something that's beneficial for you because you can see actually where you're wasting money and can save money and put back into your business. So um, that's brilliant, Cherise. Yeah, so I know PQ one another challenge. So <laughs> well, yeah, I thought I mean, I'd do it. For just, just me personally, um, I, I've saved £900 this week. I sold a lot of stuff and I sold £600 with last week. Literally, I mean, I know I've got a lot of tools and stuff like that, but I've literally sold everything. I don't need it no more. Like you said, the stuff in there that yeah. even tools-wise, I've, I've not used for a year, so a lot's gone. I've still got probably two grams with a gear. I still, I still need to shift that on, but there's so many things in your house that you can literally get rid of. Even just going through clothes uh you know anything toys all toys that your kids about anything just sell a lot yeah absolutely sell it if you can sell it if you haven't got nothing to sell then like i said cut out where you're spending on silliness and try and see what you can save 
So if everyone's in, um, I've said it for three weeks because I figured our uh, masterminds are on Wednesday. So by the last one, it would have almost been a month. So you can really get an idea of how much money you saved. Um, the best way to do that, if you have a routine, if you're a person who has a specific routine, so you, every day you buy this, these, this, this, and this, and this, then you can probably work out off the top of your head how much you spend. But if your day-to-day -day routine is different, you might feel like a coffee today, you might not on other days, try and make um, a daily note of it. We're on Facebook, we're on our laptops every day, guys. All of us are at some point. Even if you're at work, you will come home and you'll go on your laptop. Go on your laptop, open a Word document, and just write down what you would have bought today. That's it take you two minutes not even that if you know you would have bought a latte today from starbucks and it costs 3.69 and a muffin put that in there that's it for the day by the end of the week you would have seen how much you would have spent and how much you actually saved so i think that's something that we can actually all do um within the group um but i also just wanted to go back uh with the budgeting again if you're doing all these things and for whatever reason your budget in, you've tried all that, and for whatever reason, you're just not able to run ads consistently. Things pop up in our lives that we can't control, personal reasons, we may have to, you know, we might be offline for a little while, or whatever, or not be able to run ads consistently. That's fine, like, you know, that's life. But do at least stay connected. Join the masterminds, attend the meetings. Don't lose focus because you're not running ads. It's very, very easy to just sort of disassociate yourself with everything because you're not running ads, because you feel like you're not really part of it um so do stay connected um everyone in pq1 grows at their own pace this is not a race so please especially for new people as well please don't be disheartened or feel blue if you see people moving up and you think well i'm not moving up as fast as i want to or thought i should this is a proven system we know it works so you will get there everybody works at their own pace so please don't feel discouraged or feel you know a bit blue if you know you're not where you want it to be again talk to the group stay connected with us we all help each other to stay motivated and keep things going and i just think that um it's important because i went through a period myself where i wasn't able to run ads and i what, what wasn't not that i wasn't focused i just didn't feel involved in the group i was missing masterminds and it wasn't like me because i'd never missed any and i felt kind of left out in a sense because I wasn't able to you know people are running this and then I'm going on ad and I'm seeing other people's um, adverts and I started to feel you know but keep yourself connected what I did is I got back connected and even though I wasn't running ads and I was I was still connecting with the group I was still involved in the group chats and that way I still felt like okay I'm this is still happening I'm still doing this I'm just not able to run ads at the minute so for whatever reason if that does happen at least stay with us um in that respect but do your best to budget i'm sure it can be done because i don't see why there's no reason why all of us cannot at least manage to cut out and save a tenner a week now again it might be a tenner to you but that's two days worth of ads running and that could be two days worth of signups so yeah and back to the budget challenge it's just really that um so i hope this has helped everybody um a little bit um to understand what else you should be doing i mean we always talk about ads and facebook and the business aspect but it's good to also know money wise what you should be doing because if you're not doing this you might as well go out to cash point right now go outside open your window and just throw it out there because you have no idea what you're making you're only knowing what you're making when you get a sign up and you get a commission come through and that's not really the idea um, of the business you need to make sure that you're spending as least as possible and getting the most gain um, obviously with ads they, they vary we can all we all put in different amounts into our ad accounts depending on what we can afford but the idea is that obviously we want to spend as least as possible and gain as much as possible so uh, that's all i really wanted to cover guys um, i hope that was helpful for some um, and again, I hope that we can all uh, start this budget challenge and see how much we can even save. And even if you're somebody, maybe you're uh, ranked up and you, you don't really need to budget, but it'd be good to see what exactly you're still spending money on that you shouldn't, <laughs> you don't need to. So I think everybody can do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about, guys. Um, I'll come out of this screen share.
Thank you so much, Sharice. Um, and yeah, like Sharice has said kind of throughout, it is something that uh, it should be at the top in the middle. Um, it's something that you might not, there you go, hun, might not think about necessarily. Um, in terms of the budgeting and kind of keeping track of money, it's something I've only really recently started to really take control of and notice of. Um, and that's purely because for my birthday in January, my mum brought me this like pretty snazzy diary, which you probably see pictures of all over my page all the time because I love it. But anyway, <laughs> um, and in there it's got kind of like habit trackers. I'm just showing you a blank month and also financial matters. So I can share this with you guys if you wanted to like create something similar. Um, but I'll take a picture and I'll send that to you and you could perhaps put that in a diary of your own just as like titles. Um, and as Cherie said, kind of throughout this diary, I have day by day, I write down to-do lists. And then I also have my ads and coaching book. And then this is my book that's for kind of personal development. And for me personally, at the start of this book, I have kind of, all of my goals listed so they're all my goals and desires whether it be travel so i've got little titles i'll quickly kind of flash you the page so i've got one title that says like health and body i've got one title that says project q1 um another title that says income um another one that's relationships so that's kind of with my family my friends you guys um another one that's travel and then another one that's like personal desires um, slash material things. So it's kind of like, I don't know, a new laptop or a new webcam and things like that go there. Um, then after that, I have pages and pages of uh, <laughs> my gratitude. So today I am grateful for, and then write what you're grateful for. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then at the back, because I don't want to have a million books, I have um, my affirmations this side. So they say, these are kind of, I spoke about on our 30 day group, I have like soft affirmations and then I've got like new revised affirmations. Um, but I found it quite hard to talk to myself about the affirmations at first. I almost had a barrier up that was like batting the affirmations away as soon as I said them. Um, so this was my list of like quite easy ones. So they are, you are loved, you are powerful, you are surrounded by miracles, you are ready, you are courageous, courageous, you are kind, you are happy, you are confident, you are funny, you are bright. So they're like quite easy to take in. They're all things that I kind of know that I am, so I'm not dismissing them. Um, my last one for you guys that know I'm absolutely obsessed with this book, you are a badass. <laughs> and then I've also got inside here as well the last few pages are my what's it called Visual visualization visualization so it's titled living the dream and this is my perfect day so i'll read you the first bit this morning i woke up in a beach cabin at the jungle beach resort in tricomalee sri lanka it's the 11th of september and tom's just jumped out of bed I do that every day. <laughs> Leave it Absolutely. Out. <laughs> out of bed. Um, but yeah, so, and Tom's got the same. No, no, I don't. Mine's pink. For you though, guys that don't want to cool. get them. <laughs> so, we have these books. Um, kind of, when Sharice men mentioned doing this for you guys, I was like, yeah, it's a great idea. It gets everyone in the right mindset to manage their business and themselves. Um, but yeah, that's it really. In terms of, Sharice, you mentioned um, kind of asking yourself whether you really need things. That's something me and Tom probably do too much. We walk out of the supermarket and we'll pick some up and we'll be like, uh, that's like two days of ads. <laughs> and everything <laughs> analyse on an ads basis. <laughs> it's like, we could get a new, because I really want one of these like bottles, but it's from the big bottle company, they're posh ones. Anyway. They're like fifteen pounds. I had two of those. Both of them broke. Don't oh, buy them. Oh really? Okay. Well, yeah. now I'm definitely not getting them. <laughs> anyway, they're three days of ads. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, just kind of be conscious of what you're spending, how you're spending, and 
you can you can save everywhere really even when you go to fill up your car at the garage don't buy a chocolate bar <laughs> it's as simple as that really unless you got to pump up your tires then you got to buy a chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> Or go to a supermarket garage. Uh, they're cheap. They're always cheaper than at the roadside. So, yeah. so the chocolate bar or the petrol? <laughs> the petrol. <laughs> um, question: With your um, saving receipts and for tax purposes, when we're getting the receipts from Facebook about our ads, do we need to be saving those? Can they help with um, getting the tax back, or is that something that's not? necessarily associated with the tax um it, it, it sorry richard do you want to yeah what was that what was that harriet um so with our facebook adverts when we get the monthly receipts that come through should we be yeah. saving those for tax purposes yeah 100 percent. yeah they're, they're the most important actually because you get them monthly and they come out your bank so it's, it's on your bank statement just print that little bit of bank statement off do you have an accounting already or not no, no, not yet. And I'm going to open one of those HSBC ones that Ryan was talking about. No, like an accountant for the, for the business? No, not yet. So when you get to sort of like rank up to probably like three, four year, I would say get an accountant then and just save everything you can. I just literally put everything in a box and I just hand me an accountant the box at the end of the year and he does everything for me. So, but yeah, keep every, every single receipt. Anything to do with the magic or the business, even... Like I say, stationary, anything, just keep everything you can. Okay, sure. Because there will become a point, obviously, later on where you're earning a lot of money. And the more you can offset, is obviously the less tax you're going to pay. So. Can I ask, can I ask a question as well? Um, when I got the products, I'm not sure where I put those receipts. They're quite um, expensive products. Yeah, so, you need yeah, you need them. Um, you will be like approaching Najik probably and get a copy. Yeah. Rach, yeah. did you get an, an email at all with your confirmation of your order or anything like that? Uh, can't if remember. you did, you can. If you did, you can use that as a receipt, but you can then just call a Najik as well. Should oh, I should. You're right. I probably got an email like with the, but that was the um, the delivery. I'm, I'll check that. I'll check it. Check, have a check and see what it says on it. But if it's pretty much got uh, the price and the fact you've paid for it, it's a receipt. So you can use that. Okay. Also, just, I just wanted to add that Facebook, you can add, you can access all your receipts in the billing section. If you just, yeah. um, you don't really need to print them out. You just, just access them all at once and print them all at once when it comes to tax time. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom just wanted, I think if you haven't got an accountant yet, or you're not looking to get one, you're kind of co comfortable doing it yourself, there is an app. Uh, it's called QuickBooks, you've probably heard adverts for it, it's bloody everywhere, but basically rather than having to save receipts, if you just take a photo on your phone with the app, it'll automatically do your tax deductions for it. So you can, put, you can put everything in there, your income for your business, everything, and it'll do your tax for you by the end of the year. Uh, on Google at the moment, it says it's $27 per month, but I don't believe that's true. I believe it's cheaper. Worth looking into, though. I weigh the costs of an accountant over an app and <laughs> see what you come up with. See if you can save some money there. <laughs> um, anybody got any questions at this point? I'm going to have a quick scroll through the chat, so feel free to talk amongst yourselves whilst I do so. Or not. Has anybody else opened one of those HSBC international accounts that Ryan spoke about a couple of weeks ago? Richard's got yeah. one. Who else? Yeah, was that Harriet? I did, yeah. Um, Ryan was saying, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, about opening one of those HSBC foreign currency accounts because... Yeah, um, yeah, you, you'll need one eventually because obviously when you get paid, you get paid, it'll become, it'll come in euros, they'll exchange it into pounds, so you're getting charged for that. Then also, uh, as you get later on, you want to open the euro account only because in Adjic pays you in euros, so there's no exchange then for exchanging your money because I think if you... Say so we to sell a K8, you'll get something charged like 35, I'm sure it's like 35 pounds. 
exchange for actually exchanging your own money. Yeah. Something silly. So as you get to like three, four year up over, definitely um, invest in uh, a euro account. Definitely, but not invest. It was you. But you have to have seventeen hundred pounds a month. I know that going into it um, to really? be able to have have the account. Yeah. Do you know your um, your current account? Do you yeah. get like a um, card? So can you pay? No, no, not a euro account. No, it's just literally you've got to go online as well. You can't access it via online via your mobile app neither. Okay, well in that case, anybody that's with Barclays, um, exactly the same as HSBC, you can get a euro current account, and you can't access. You know, you don't have a bank card for it, so the only way you can kind of change money over is online. You can't do it on the banking apps. Um. But you don't have to have a minimum amount with Barclays. So you could do it as soon as you join Project Q1. Um, you well, just have to have a current yeah. account with them. Yeah, same with HSBC. You don't have a, don't have a minimum, I don't have a minimum amount with them. Either. Was you already with HSBC, Ali? Yes, I was, yeah. So that might be why. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's the difference. Yeah. I was with that West, see? Yeah, and then that's the, it. Right, yeah, you've got to have a minimum. Well, obviously I did, but like someone who was starting new, yeah, I think what you have to do, you have to set up the a current account first, prove that you've got seventeen hundred pounds going in a month, and then it's okay. They'll just give you the go ahead. Will um will there not be a change in the money when an office comes to the UK? It's yeah, it's year, isn't it? Well, no. yeah, I thought I thought it was coming this year, but I mean, does anyone know? I'm not sure if it's an office or whether it's just a, a flagship store in London, just to, um, just to get that out there. But um, I can imagine when it comes over, they'd kind of convert everything to pounds just because they'd be dealing in and out of the UK. Um, but yeah, I, I, we literally have no idea until it gets here, really. Um, there's not been any kind of word in newsletters or anything like that, so it's just a case of waiting and see what, see what happens. But I'm sure it's, um, I think I'm, I'm sure that it's like a flagship sort of store that's opening in London, not necessarily a head office yet. Ah, okay. But again, don't hold me to it, it's all rumours until <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I'd just ask, um, just for you guys that know a lot about the um, Euro side of it, Norma that I've been talking to this week, I think she's based over in Northern Ireland, is that right Norma? Yes. Yeah. So in terms of the euros coming over, will that mean that she's not losing that um, that currency? Yeah, she won't lose anything because she'll get paid directly from Magic in Dusseldorf, straight in the, she gets paid, her uh, currency is euros anyway, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So, Norma, you are... Win, win. <laughs> just wanted to check. They're not euros yet, though. Oh. No, sterling. Oh, you pounds. Yeah, yeah. I'm Northern Ireland, so ah, we're right, yeah. at the minute. <laughs> yeah, be the yeah you'll, be, you'll be hit the same as everybody else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not for too much longer, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Um, and yeah, as kind of a few people have revealed, you can kind of go to HSBC. Um, if you're already with them, there isn't a minimum. If you're with Barclays, you can open one of theirs. Um, I think with Barclays, you only get charged if you have over sixty grand transferred at yeah, one point. Yeah, over sixty thousand pound transferred at one point. Uh, okay. So I think we're all all right for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and I think even then, it's like five or six pound. I was like, I'm sure I can deal with that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so just have a look at your options, see what the banks are saying. Um, and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. To be fair, we went down. Um, Valentine's it wasn't Day. straightforward this is the kind of at stuff all that we did. <laughs> because our bank clerk was an absolute nightmare. Yeah, she was a bit, yeah, but generally it's straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't go to Harborn, Barclays. <laughs> Stay well away. <laughs> um, anybody got any questions? Uh, Paul opens his, got up at 500 a month in the current account. Who did you open with, Paul? He's muted. You're muted, mate. Can't hear you. Can see your mouth. Can't hear you. Shall I mute you for you? Right there. 
There you go, go again. Uh, HSBC. Okay, cool. Yeah. Was you previously with them or? No, no. No, okay. So I just went in and I did it all in one day, a current account and a Euros account. Oh, sounds good. There you go, guys. Um, pretty easy, so you can just get that all done straight away, really. Any more questions? And that's obviously going towards Sharice's saving. You'll be saving a few extra euros there, so. Absolutely. Copy um, down. <laughs> Anna, I just saw your question. <laughs> no. <laughs> it would oh, be I thought you were going to say that. Yeah. You can, if you're going to a leaders meetup, if you're going to meet um, members of the team, yes. Oh, but so Sharice. Or Dusseldorf. I'm pretty yes. sure Richard does. Is that for normal holidays as then, but Richard as well? Do you get yeah, that? anything because yeah. all, you, all you've got to say, this is what my accountant told me. If, like, say you're going abroad, you're going to hold there, that holiday is to purposely do videos for your business. Oh, oh uh, that's the nice last way around it. <laughs> yeah, any, any, any holiday, any holiday expense. Um, if you've got <laughs> this, is, this is an even better one. If you're abroad and you go out for a meal, you can claim that as a holiday expense because you're entertaining foreign people to try and get them back into the UK. Even that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Man of all trades are rich. Yeah. <laughs> wow. rich, rich, do you have to show them your videos as proof? <laughs> no, <I'm>, uh, no. <laughs> They'd all want to join, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> just, just um, follow on. Actually, is anyone? I know we spoke about this. I think it was last week or week before about Dusseldorf. Is anyone here going? I'm thinking. I am. Um, yeah. What What's happening? Is it just a day affair or, or, or two days? Because I know. Sunday. Um, Rick, it just depends whether um yeah. a few of us that have been in quite a long time. Um, there is a 6A event slash meeting the day before on the Saturday afternoon. Yeah, so that would mean staying over, wouldn't it, obviously? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if there is, like, obviously you don't have to attend, but if you wanted to attend the 6A plus meeting, that's on the Saturday. Yeah, I'll have to sort of arrange many. Anyone wants any motivation to get to 6A before June, there you go. <laughs> you get to go to some high rollers meeting. <laughs> Has anyone had any prices on flights or not? I uh, haven't looked, we, to be honest. We did. Not yet. Uh, we did briefly. Well, last time, I went last year around the same time and our flight from Heathrow to Dusseldorf was uh, about £112 return. Yeah. For anyone that's new and has just popped on, there is an event in Dusseldorf, Germany on the 17th? Correct. Yes, 17th of June. Um, and it's an Enagic event and basically you don't have to be affiliated to go. Um, anybody can go and it's just kind of extra knowledge and training sessions by Enagic themselves on the products. There'll also be kind of an award ceremony. And then, um, like, an evening meal slash dance situation uh, <laughs> to celebrate their 10-year anniversary in Dusseldorf. Cool. Frankie, didn't you go to Cyprus before? <laughs> Don't go to Cyprus, come with us. <laughs> I've my auntie and uncle, so I've, I've kind of been, like, draped in for my cousins. And then like five and seven, that's my excuse anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you off, I suppose. <laughs> um, also, anyone that's new on the call that might not have seen my messages, um, we've got the like a little team meetup in Birmingham on the seventh, 7th of April. Uh, so like kind of what two weeks away now? Um but yeah, so meet up in Birmingham. If you're not in the event group, pop me a message um, and I'll get you added in there. For any of you that don't know, my name's Lily Beth, if you want to find me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Has everyone booked their um, hotels who, who are booking hotels? I have. I spoke to her mum earlier. 
<laughs> and uh, Cam, wait, what are you saying, Harriet? Stuck. I'm, I'm sorry, I just talked over you then, lovely. What did you say, Harriet? You're sharing the bed with me, so we've got it all sorted. Yeah. Well, well, where is it that we're staying again? The Holiday Inn? Okay. She thinks. Where's everyone else staying? Well, James said he's staying at the Hilton, but the one that's like the, the back Hilton, not the Broad Street Hilton. Yeah, I went for one that was quite close to where we're going because I have a feeling we're not going to want to walk too far no. when we're finished by the end of the night. <laughs> Um, Are you sorted yet, Cerise? No, I'm not actually. I need to sort myself out. It's just because Canada was there, um, so I didn't really get a chance to sort myself out. But actually, on that note, I'd like to just quickly tell you guys all something. Um, my trip to Canada wasn't just a holiday. I'm actually immigrating, and I'm oh going God. to leave in Canada. Yeah. Um, I won't be going just yet. I will be here till at least summer. Um, and then I'll be going over there for about six months. So you might not see me on these calls as much. I'll probably be on the Canada USA uh, masterminds. Um, so I just thought I'd announce that now. Might as well. Um, <laughs> since I've made up my mind to go. Uh, but I'll be here for a little while. You ain't getting rid of me, oh, Daddy. <laughs> well, we'll just have to throw you a big party before you go. Yeah, just another excuse. Yeah, why not? <laughs> It's for all the all the rewarding for saving. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right, we've all got a goal now. We're saving for Sharice's leaving do. Right, there you go. <laughs> Doesn't matter about the ads anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we've just found a free holiday in Canada as well. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first that was oh, one of the first things I said to Sharice when she said it to me. I was like, right then, I'll see you in Canada. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so I just wanted to let that let you out there, just in case you, you know, you, you don't see me on these anymore, or you start thinking, oh, I'm Therese, or whatever, that's why. But I'm not going anywhere. I'm still with PQ1, just be bouncing back and forth. <laughs> At least you can Where try and hold exactly a different type of ads. Sorry. You today. <laughs> it's great minds, that's what it is. Both speak at the same time. <laughs> them wavelengths. <laughs> Uh, Camilla, you're asking where Sharice is going? Toronto, yeah. Sharice? Uh, Ontario. Ontario. I was so close. Yeah. All yeah. the right letters and all the wrong it's way. That, yeah. <laughs> it's, that, it's not far. <laughs> it's about an hour. Yeah. Do you have family there then? Uh, yeah, I've got quite a family out there. So um, they didn't want me to come home. <laughs> I was like, oh. Aww. I had quite a good time, so yeah, it's um, going to be interesting. I'd, why not, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, why we do this? Exactly. Love a challenge, so here's the next one. <laughs> Excellent. Right, ladies, Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, we've got five minutes until the hour's up, pretty much. Anybody got any questions about anything? No. So, any subjects that you guys want covered in the next coming weeks or any help you need or any support don't have to answer me now and feel on the spot you can drop me a message and i'll get back to you <laughs> right then guys i think we'll leave it there i'm sure sharice is going to get a thousand messages asking to come and visit her in <laughs> <Canada>. <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> How many bedrooms, Sharice? Oh, we're going to have to get a ten bedroom now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Nice one. Love it. Right then, guys. If anything springs to mind, pop it in the chat or pop your coach or myself a message. And we'll see you next week. Bye, Bye guys. Then. Bye. 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 Bye.